Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. M. Nagaraju, working as assistant professor in the department of uh, CSEA and ML in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So today uh, uh, we are here to discuss some of the uh, important concepts, uh, some of the definitions we can say which uh, which we have, which we are going to study in module number four. So that's why I have been named this uh, session as definition and terminology four. So in this particular uh, session, we are going to discuss the most important. Uh, uh, definitions that is about uh, the probability probability and statistics related kind of things we will try to co cover in this particular session so this uh, this session is a continuous session session to the previous one where we have discussed about the different kinds of reasoning systems we have discussed what do you mean by monotonic reasoning what do you mean by non monotonic reasoning and uh, how they are going to be different and uh, for for a short review we can say that mono, uh, if i say the uh, reasoning system is monotonic then the conclusions are going to be stable or otherwise we can say that the uh, uh, the conclusions are going to be consistent so what do you mean by consistent here means even if you are adding more uh, knowledge to the existing knowledge base it is not going to reflect to the already existing conclusion for example you see, if you see uh, in in the initial state if you give any conclusion as to be true uh, i mean some some kind of statement as, as true or false uh, then even if you are adding uh, more information to that one it is not going to change means if a conclusion is already proven to be true even if you are adding more knowledge to that one it is not going to change means it is not going to become false so that's why we say that in uh, non in monotonic reasoning systems the knowledge base is consistent and even the systems are also going to be consistent but when it comes to uh, non monotonic reasoning it is not like that means initially when a particular conclusion or in when a particular uh, statement has been proven to be true then after adding certain kind of new information to the existing knowledge base then it is going to change to false so uh, such kind of things we call it as a non monotonic reasonings so now the question comes is why we require these kind of reasoning systems so these systems are mainly required in order to overcome the problem of uncertainty means if if you want to solve any particular problem for that one uh, the knowledge that present is may not be sufficient to us so in that case we can say that uh, some kind of uncertainty exists so that we cannot come to a particular conclusion so for giving such kind of uh, conclusions and uh, for giving uh, such kind of uh, final finalized statements we are going for the monotonic reasonings or non monotonic reasoning systems but if if you observe more clearly the non monotonic systems are going to give the results as true or false means uh, in many of the cases we can say that uh, true or false giving such uh, means giving such kind of answers may not be sufficient uh, to come to a particular conclusion so in that case we need to uh, look for the alternative means instead of just telling something as true or something as false it's better to represent such kind of outputs in the form in the numerical form so for that one we are going for the statistical methods where we are giving we are giving certain kind of uh, numerical value showing a particular uh, strength of a strength of a particular evidence so that's why uh, instead of in order to not to just give true or false kind of things we are going to study some stat probability and statistical methods where we are giving giving some uh, numerical value in order to uh, support or in order to oppose a particular evidence so for that one we have, we need to study in module number 4 definitely about uh, the probability and the bayes theorem and uh, we are going to study some of the bayesian statistics and we are also going to uh, see the definition and uh, uh, how uh, these bayesian networks are different with the other kinds of networks so in today's session our concentration will be on probability and bayes bayes theorem and bayesian statistics and bayesian networks so directly we will move into the first concept so uh, first of all uh, we, we need to understand what is the main uh, motto of uh, the systems means why we are developing this ai machines means our primary duty is to make the ai machines to act uh, intelligent so in that case we can say that the primary goal of any uh, problem solving systems are to collect the evidences so that is more important means until and unless you have more knowledge with you you cannot able to tell something is going to be true or some some statement is going to be false so that's why how how much possibility is there that much uh, possible evidences you should supposed to collect uh, you should supposed to collect and you need to keep on adding to the knowledge base that's why in the previous sessions also we discussed that knowledge base uh, is not going to be consistent always means regularly we need to communicate with the human experts means the humans uh, 
the humans who are expertised in particular domain and we keep on uh, collecting more inf more information or more knowledge and that knowledge we keep on need to add to the existing knowledge base so in that case for any problem statement a uh, problem solving system we can say that how much evidences you collect that much efficient that system is going to become that's why we say that the primary goal of any problem solving system is to collect the evidences right so why why we require these kind of things means uh, just now we discussed in mono uh, while we are discussing the differences between monotonic and reasoning and non monotonic reasoning it was very clear that when you are keeping uh, keep on adding the new knowledge to the existing knowledge base the conclusion which has already proven to be true in the earlier case may not become true in this in the present case so that's why that uh, means the changes in the conclusion means the changes in the statement the outcomes that completely depends upon the evidences you are collecting and your the evidences you are adding to the knowledge base that's why the main intention of collecting this uh, uh, evidences is along and to modify its behavior on the basis of the evidences means initially the behavior of the system may be different and after adding the new evidences the system uh, output is going to be different for example uh, in the earlier sessions we have discussed one important uh, story uh, which is called as abc murder story so in this abc murder story what happens the three people are involved one is called as abad babat and kebat so these three people are uh, considered to be some of the suspects to a particular murder case so in that case what happens the people are going to suspect uh, suspect these people first in the initial state uh, the policeman is going to collect some evidences from these three different people so whatever the answers given by these three people it, it is giving the conclusion that these three people are innocent and they are not at all related to that particular murder case but what happens when they, the police when the uh, interrogation is going on, uh, keep on going and when we are collecting the new evidences and when we are uh, trying when we are continuously updating the knowledge base so what happens in the uh, next coming states uh, it is not going to be true means uh, in the initial state we we came to a particular conclusion that abc are not the suspects uh, they are innocents by the knowledge we are having but when we are keeping keep on adding the new evidences new knowledge to the existing knowledge base what happens the conclusion is going to change means any one of the person are few, uh, two of these people are three of people these three, uh, three people are telling lies so it is going to be like that that's why we can say that the problem system problem solving systems behavior is going to completely changed based upon the uh, evidences you are collecting okay that, that's why our uh, our every time our motto is to keep on adding the new evidences to the existing knowledge base or existing problem solving systems so and also the behavior of such systems are going to completely depend on a particular statistical theory of evidence we can say means we are not going to talk about the sequence uh, of non monotonic reasonings and monotonic reasonings here we are going to take the third reasoning system third type of reasoning system generally what we call it as a statistical uh, reasoning systems so in this one in order to understand the behavior of the model we, we need to have a specific theory which is called as statistical theory of evidences so the statistical theory of evidences we are naming it as uh, a word called as here bayesian statistics so by using this bayesian statistics we are going to give a conclusion with with the help of a particular numerical value for example in the initial case uh, in in terms of abc only uh, based upon the first evidences we may not say that there is only 20% chance for the abort to commit a crime at the same time uh, for b there is only 10% of chances at that chance are there for c it is uh, some 30% of chances are there means initially means in the non monotonic reasonings we used to say that s or no means a whether a committed the crime may be true or may be false at a similar uh, similar kind b may be true or may be false and c also may be true or may be false but these kind of things will not be possible means these kind of things will not be suitable to solve some real kind applications especially if you talk about uh, interrogation of about a particular murder story so simply we cannot say that a has committed the crime or not committed the crime it will not be like that so we are making use of this statistical theory through which we are giving some numerical values telling that how much possibilities are there so these possibilities are based upon the evidences what we are having in the initial state what we are having in the initial state but when we keep on adding the new evidences to this one so what happens the numerical values are going to change in earlier uh, a 
for a we have given 20% of possibility sometimes it may become 10% or sometimes it may become 70% also so that completely depends upon the evidences you are collecting and the evidences you are adding to the existing knowledge base so in order to give these kind of reasonings we are making use of a new system which is called new theory or new system we can say which is called as a statistical theory uh, which is named as a bayesian statistics so with this explanation we can, we can come to a particular conclusion that a, a problem solving system which we have which is given to be true of a particular sentence or particular statement may not be true after adding the new evidences to the existing one so let us talk about the probability first so uh, in the probability the very first important thing what we discuss what we are going to discuss here is the random experiment and even this random experiment is also called as a probabilistic experiment so what do you mean by this random experiment so we can say that if a experiment means when you are conducting the experiment under the identical conditions under the identical conditions and you are not producing the same result again and again for example if you are uh, doing the experiment for 10 number of times and for those 10 number of times you are getting different results okay so but even though the results are uh, 10 different results you are obtained but those results are in between a particular range what we are expecting for example think that we are expecting that for this particular experiment the results may be from uh, 1 to 100 or the results may be from 1 to 10 so in this case when you are executing or when you are doing this experiment for 10 number of times you may get a different result but this result will be in between 1 and 10 only so doing this kind of experiments we call them as a random experiment or the probability experiment so even when you are i am repeating the statement once again you see even when you are executing this experiment when you are doing this experiment even in the identical conditions they are not going to produce the same output every time they are not going to produce the same output every time but they are going to produce the possible outcomes means what we are expecting means the range of the outcome it should be in between this range so that output you are going to get every time so such kind of experiment generally we call it as a random experiment or probabilistic experiment so it results in different outcomes just now as i said it results in different uh, outcomes when repeated in the same exact manner so let us take one particular example so tossing a coin so when you are tossing a coin uh, sometimes you may get head and sometimes you may get tail but every time we cannot guarantee that head is going to come or tail is going to come but either of this those are going to come as a result so in that case what happens such kind of experimentation we can call them as a random experiment okay so even if you are uh, exhi- uh, doing the experiment in the identical conditions the results may not be the same but they are in the expected results list only so it has more than one possible outcome this point is also very very important we are going to have more than one possible outcome that's why when you are tossing a coin the possible outcomes are two either it can be head or it can be uh, tail so that's why we cannot say that there will be only one outcome possible outcome one possible outcome but there may be multiple possible outcomes so you can expect that the outcome may, may be definitely in between this only means either it can be head or either it can be tail so it has uh, it is not possible to predict the outcome in advance this is also very very important just now we said that it we cannot guarantee that when head is going to come and when it when the tail is going to come when you are tossing a coin but definitely we can say that we are we are going to get the result that result should will be in the possible outcomes only expected possible outcomes only so such experiments generally we call them as the random experiment or the probabilistic experiment so the sample space is the collection so what do you mean by here the sample space the sample space is a collection of all the possible outcomes of an experiment okay let us try to take uh, the example of the same thing tossing a coin when you are tossing a coin what is the uh, sample space the sample space is the collection of the possible outcomes so what are the possible outcomes for the tossing a coin it can give either head or it can give either tail so in that case in this case we can say that in the uh, in the flower brackets we can write it as head comma tail it will be like this so this entire thing we generally call it as a sample space okay so this this is for tossing a coin so when you are talking about the throwing throwing of a die 
So we know that the die is going to have uh, one, two, three, up to six, six points. So here the possible outcomes will be in between this. So we can say that this is a sample space. Means when you are tossing, throwing a die, you are going to get different results every time. But definitely that result will be in between in, in this particular sample space only. Means either it can be one, either it can be two, or it can be five, or it can be six, but it cannot be seven. Okay, so that is called as here the sample space. So what do you mean by event here? An event is an outcome of the random experiment. An outcome of the random experiment. For example, if I have thrown a die and I, I got the result as six, so throwing of die is nothing but here an event. So I can say that in that particular event, the outcome what I got is six. At the same time, getting ahead, if, if it is a, a, a example of tossing it on a coin, then we can say that getting ahead when we toss a coin is an event. So we can say that each and every uh, experiment we can call it means activity we can call it as a uh, event. So that is all about the probability. Let us talk about the uh, base theorem. So we can say that Bayes theorem is a method of determining the conditional probability. Bayes theorem is a method of uh, method to determine the conditional probability. So what do you mean by here the conditional probability means the probability of one event occurring given that another event has already occurred. So what is the motto of this Bayes theorem means it has to calculate or it has to observe the probability of a particular event to get occurred. But how we are going to do it by taking the support from the already event by checking the support of event which is already occurred. So that's why we say that Bayes theorem is nothing but to determine in the conditional probability. So how you are going to ca calculate the ca probability of a particular event means by taking the event which is already completed, which has been already completed. So in simple words, we can say that, for example, if you are trying to calculate the probability of A, if it is a Bayes theorem, so how directly we cannot do, we cannot calculate the probability of A. So what you need to do, you need to take the event which has already occurred, which has already occurred. So in this case, we can say that probability of A, okay, we can say that probability of A for a given B. So you are supposed to calculate the probability of A, but how you are doing by taking the support of the event B, which is already occurred. Okay, so such such kind of things we can we call we call them as a base theorem. So because of this conditional probability, which is going to include some additional conditions. So what do you mean by here? The additional conditions means collecting the more evidences, collecting the more evidences, nothing but extracting the more data. So when you keep on extracting the more data, when you are keep on uh, adding more evidences to the knowledge base, what happens? The results are going to be refined means as much quantity and as much quality of evidences you collect and you add it to the knowledge base that much perfect the AI machine is going to understand. So we can say that the problem solving any problem solving system result is completely going to depend upon the data you are feeding to it. So how much data you feed it to, to that one that much efficient it is that much it is going to learn and that much efficient it is going to solve the problems. That's why we can say that in this conditional probability, we are going to keep on adding more data, which is going to contribute for the better results. So in simple words, we will combine these two things together, probability and base theorem. So we can say that probability can be defined as a chance that an uncertain event will occur. So how much possibility is there? How much probability is there for a particular event to get occurred? So that kind of representation we can we can explain by using a word called as probability. So actually how we are going to uh, show such kind of things by a numerical measure. Just now we discussed uh, about 20%, about 10% and about 30% like this. So the probability is going to be defined by a numerical measure. So what we call it as, we call it as a likelihood of a particular event. Means how much possibility is there, how much chances are there to uh, occur that particular event. For example, if I say that a particular patient, okay, a particular patient is suffering from fever. So either it is a viral fever or it is a normal fever. Either it is a normal fever or either it is a 
uh, viral fever whether it is a viral fever so how we are going to tell means by using this probability uh, numerical measure we can say that how much chances are there for this particular patient that he is suffering from normal fever so we can say that some 20 percent so how much possibility is there for for this particular uh, means for this fever to be a viral fever so we can say that uh, we can say some 80 percent so with this numerical measures we will come to a particular condition uh, conclusion that the patient is suffering from either with the normal fever or with the viral fever so it is going to be like that we are, we are going to use such kind of probability especially in the probabilistic reasoning why it is so why because it is going to handle the problem of uncertainty uncertainty means where you cannot able to come to a particular condition conclusion so how it will be in numerical measures if i say the probability of particular event a then the value will be in between 0 and 1 so we say that here means we uh, read this state particular thing as as probability of a means p of a is nothing but the probability of a event so if i say that probability of a is equal to 0 so what does it mean means it is completely the uncertainty of a particular event a okay and at the same time if i say probability uh, p of a equal to 1 then it means that it is completely a certainty value of a particular event a so the mathematical representation will be like this so just now we discussed that it is a, a, a conditional probability and it is going to uh, make use of a particular event which is already occurred and it is also going to have some additional conditions where we are going to get more data which we are going to contribute means which, which the uh, problem solving system is going to contribute for better results let us talk about the uh, bayesian statistics so the uh, fundamental notation of bayesian statistics is that nothing but the conditional probability again the same thing so the conditional probability of a given b is the probability that event a occurs so how the event a occurs means by providing the event b which has already occurred so in, in simple words we can say that calculating the probability of a given a by taking the support of the already event which has already occurred is nothing but here the probability of a and b by the probability of b. so this is the equation through which we can we can able to calculate the probability of a for a given event b so let us talk about the bayesian networks so bayesian belief network so there are there are different words which we are going to make use uh, for for bayesian networks so here we either it is a bayesian network or the bayesian belief network so which is that which is a key computer technology which is going to deal about the probability probabilistic okay probability so probability of a particular event so how for what purpose we are going to make use in order to solve a problem which is having the uncertainty means the problems where we have the uncertainty issue such problems we can clear we can overcome by using these probabilistic methods so bayesian network or bayesian bayesian belief network is going to support for this so actually what do you mean by this network so why we require this kind of network means it is going to give some visualization support this one what is a visualization for which it we are going to draw a particular graph that's why we say that even the bayesian network is also called as a graphical model so for what purpose we are doing means we are drawing this graphical model we are visualizing this graphical model in order to represent the probabilities which is nothing but which represents means this bayesian network is going to represent a set of variables and also the conditional dependencies between them okay what kind of variables that involved in this probabilistic uh, probability uh, theory okay at the same time what is the dependency means what is the relationship that exists between the variables okay so the bayesian bayesian network we can say in simple words the bayesian network is nothing but some visualization where we are going to see the set of variables and also the associations or relationships between the uh, variables okay so how we are going to represent a, a specific uh, graph called as directed acyclic graph so the other names given to the bayesian networks is sometimes we say that it is a base network or we can say it as a belief network sometimes even we we pronounce it by using this terminology called as decision network or simply we can say that bayesian model okay so these bayesian networks are completely the probabilistic 
why it is called as probabilistic means we are going to establish or we are going to develop this networks from the probability distribution so the networks are also going to use the probability theory for prediction as well as the anomaly detection so let us try to observe the sum of the examples where we are going to use these kind of uh, bayesian networks so we can say that there are few applications where if there is any prediction kind of thing where anomaly detection is there diagnostics automatic uh, automated insights reasoning time series predictions and decision making under certainty whenever these kind of applications are there it's the best choice to give a visual representation and trying to understand the problem statement is by using this bayesian networks so in bayesian networks we are going to see two different parts we can say that in bayesian networks building models so how many building models are there there are two specific parts one part we can call it as a directed acyclic graph and another one is the table of conditional probabilities just now we discussed bayesian network is going to represent the conditional probabilistic distribution the distribution of these values so we can say that the generalized form of the bayesian network is represents and solve the decision problems under uncertain knowledge okay so where the knowledge is not certain it is completely uncertain so how we are going to do it by using a specific diagram called as influence diagram so a bayesian network uh, is a graph which is going to made up of some nodes and arcs and especially this is this is a word very very important these are the directed links we can say so each node is going to correspond to the random variables just now we discussed it that network is going to represent some set of variables and also the relationship between the variables so these variables we are representing here with a specific term means we are uh, uh, pronouncing with a specific term which is called as a node node is nothing but some random variables so the values of these variables can be either continuous or it can be discrete but definitely um, means how we are going to represent the relationship between the nodes means by using some arcs which are the directed arrows only means there is no uh, undirected means you, you are not going to see uh, nodes and this kind of relationship definitely we are going to represent the relationship either like this or we are going to represent in this particular fashion that's why we say that in bayesian network the directed arcs in the arcs are completely the directed arcs okay which are going to represent the casual relationship or the conditional probability between the random variables so how much possibility is there means for a particular event to occur how much possibilities are there when just now we discussed probability of a for a given b so we can say that here a the possibility of occurring a is completely depend upon the uh, probability of b which has already been occurred so these directed graphs are arrows connected the pair of nodes in the graph let us try to see how it will so this is a simple diagram we can we can say how this bayesian networks will looks like so these links represents that one node directly influence the other node one node directly influence on the other node so just now we, we discussed if i say the probability of a for a given b means definitely b is going to influence on a so how we how we are going to represent means uh, in this particular case it can be the probability of a for a given b or it can be the probability of uh, a for given d we can represent like this okay so um, of course uh, if you see this diagram it will be a little bit dif different how it will be see the probability of occurring for this particular d means how can you say that uh, the e e d event is going to occur means it completely depends upon the event of a so that's why we say that the relationship between this node a and d we are giving a directed graph so what is directed graph is going to tell means the event of mean that d event occurrence is going to influence by this event which is called as a so okay if, if that the arrow marks are going to tell like that at the same time if you observe this d and c means the probability of c means how much possibility is there to for this particular event to get occurred that completely depends upon the probability of this particular event d so we can say that the influence means d node is going to influence definitely on the probability of c on probability of c uh, means probability of an event c to get occurred 
if there is no particular directed link means for example if you observe here there is no particular link in between a, a and c so what does it mean means there is no influence means event c does not have any influence by event a to get occurred okay so if there are any influences we are going to represent with a directed graph a directed arc so in the in this uh, above diagram we can say that a b c and d are the random variables which are going to represent by the nodes of the network graph so we can say that this is the complete bayesian network if you are considering node b right the same thing what i have explained now uh, if you are considering node b which is connected with the node a by the directed arrow so what does it mean means node a is called so what we call the node a node a is called as a parent of the node b so in this case we can say that a is considered going means a is going to be considered as a parent parent node okay parent node for what parent node for b and also the parent node for d and in this particular case c is going to be completely independent of a that's why we say that c does not event c occurrence does not influence by the event a why because there is no any particular directed graph in between a and c nodes Okay, so the two different components of the Bayesian networks. So the Bayesian network has a, are having two different components, which we are calling it as the casual component and another one, and there is the actual numbers. So just now we discussed that uh, each node in the Bayesian network is going to have the conditional probability distribution. It is going to have the conditional probability distribution. So how we do, uh, represent it? The probability of a particular event to get occurred is going to be influenced by its parent. Okay, just now we we discussed that A and B, A and B. So if it is A and B, so we are going to write the probability like this. Probability of B to get occurred is going to influence by the uh, event A. So in the similar case, means the probability of X I going to be uh, influenced means that is that is going to completely depend upon the parent of X I. So which is going to determine the effect of parent. Effect of the parent node on the child node, you can say. Means in this particular case, the effect of the node A on node B. Okay, so this is going to represent by the Bayesian networks. So in mathematically, how we are going to represent it will be like this: is Bayesian network is based on the joint probability distribution or the conditional probability. So if you take uh, the variables as x1, x2, x uh, up to xn. if these are the probabilities of different combinations then they are not known going they are not going to be means they are going to be called as a joint probability distribution means the combination of all these the combination of all these variables so how we are going to represent them it is like this means the joint conditional probability is going to written in terms of the joint probability distribution like this so the probability of one particular x1 so how we are going to decide by the other uh, other variables okay it will be like this so all the combinations we are going to take up all the combinations means for x1 uh, the remaining things we are considering at the same time for x2 we are going to uh, consider the remaining things so it is going to be like that so in general we can say that each variable xi we can write the equation means uh, how this joint probability distribution equation can be written means by using this statement this equation we can say the probability of xi in which is going to influence on the combination of the probability of uh, combination of xi minus 1 up to 1 so in simple words this statement we can be written even like this the parent of xi so this is a way how we can represent the joint probability distribution so hope you understood how the, uh, how this uh, what is this probability and how this probability is going to be helpful for us in order to handle the problem of uncertainty and at the same time uh, uh, i think you have understood the base base theorem and also the bayesian networks so this is the reference i have used in order to prepare this content so uh, this is up to the today's session and uh, in the next coming session we will come up with the other definitions and terminologies which are related to module 5 till then thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates